Okay, so now we're going to talk about cranial nerves, and we're going to talk about this for a little while. These are extremely important. Uh, they are incredibly uh, useful diagnostic um, indicators. So you need to know the cranial nerves, uh, and you need to be able to distinguish whether the uh, whether a lesion or, or or a damage or a problem is located distally out in the periphery at the at the level of the cranial nerve or within the central nervous system. And we're going that is our goal is to understand the difference between those three places. First, we have to understand what cranial nerves are. Cranial nerves are nerves that take information out of a hole in the cranium. And as you recall, spinal nerves are, are ones that take, uh, that are nerves that exit the vertebral column. There is one nerve that, that, that illustrates the importance of the way I, I phrase that, and that is the spinal accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11. Cranial nerve 11 arises from motor neurons in the high cervical cord. Those neurons give rise to a root that instead of going out the vertebral column, it actually goes into this cranium. It goes through the subarachnoid space, through the uh, uh, foramen magnum, and into the cranium, and then out of the dura through a hole in the cranium. So the cells of origin are in the spinal cord, but it is a cranial nerve because the nerve actually exits from the cranium. Great. So here is here's our, our issue. This is a, a half of a skull. The top half has been removed. This would be the front, the back. Here's the frame and magnum. The occipital uh, pole would be back here. The occipital cerebrum, uh, occipital cortex would be here. The cerebellum would be here. The temporal lobes would be here. And um, the frontal lobes here, you can see the, the indent where the two eyes are. And so there, you can see that there are a collection of little holes out here. There's some holes down here, which you can't really see. And there's some holes right here. And we're just going to zoom in at that right here. This area is just, is just enlarged over here. This is the midline. Each one of these little holes, what goes through there is olfactory nerves. And this area is called the cribiform plate. The cribiform plate is, a, is basically a, a, a holy plate through which um, individual olfactory nerves travel. And this illustrates the idea that uh, cranial nerves are to get you out of the cranium. Okay. So, um, and, and here's, here's an illustration of that. This is, uh, we're looking at... We're looking at this area now, right here. OK. So here's the cribriform plate up here. Here is the optic nerve going to the eyes, which are sitting up here, the orbits. This right here is the internal carotid coming up to supply blood to the brain. And this is the ocular motor nerve. And you can see that the ocular motor nerve and the optic nerve are both exiting from the cranium. Now, it's interesting to note that this optic nerve is, remember, it's, it's central. It's part of the central nervous system. But it is properly called a cranial nerve because it carries information outside of the cranium. Okay? It's st still central, but it's carrying information um, between the, the outside of the cranium and the inside of the cranium. It's actually carrying information this way because it's a, the optic nerve. All right, so the, um, the cranial nerves are not as well behaved as the spinal nerves. Remember, the spinal nerves all have a somatosensory component, a voluntary motor component, and some of them have an autonomic motor component. In cranial nerves, we got, we got every possible combination. Some of them are simple, and some of them are not. And I'm going to show you an example of, a, of, of one of the least simple uh, one, there are three really complicated ones. This is one of the three really complicated ones. But I think uh, it will illustrate the, the importance of understanding a cranial nerve. OK, so here is facial nerve, the facial nerve, which is cranial nerve 7. And what I've done is this gray area, it, uh, this is the, um, 
I'm sorry, this whole area, this is the division between the central nervous system, the hindbrain in this case, and the periphery. And so this is central and this is periphery. And what this nerve does is it, it's just, it is the highway upon which a group of somewhat fairly, well, what appears to be randomly chosen functions have jumped on to get from a very function-based organization centrally to a very location-based uh, 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 location in the periphery. What do I mean by that? So centrally, the, uh, there are collections of neurons that are involved in, in control of, of the muscles of facial expression. There are um, neurons that are involved in the control of salivation or, or lacrimation, tear production. Um, and they sit in different places because they do different things. So centrally, it's functionally based. You have a bunch of different places. These are called cranial nerve nuclei. They're gonna send axons or receive axons that are gonna travel across the dura in one of these cranial nerve highways. And it is a weird, nonsensical group of axons that have collected into the facial nerve. More peripherally, where do, they, where do they travel? Well, they travel where they have to go to get to do the thing that they have to do. So the, the ones that are gonna produce salivation are gonna travel in, somewhere in the, in the mouth or pharynx. In, the ones that are gonna produce lacrimation have to get into the eyes. The, one, the ones that are gonna innervate the, the nasal mucosa um, are gonna get into the nose. So they, they have different places that they have to go um, according to uh, where the, the target is. And the only thing that's common to the facial nerve is that initial exit from the cranium and, and for a short stretch of time afterwards. Okay? So this is a diagnostic, uh, this is of diagnostic utility. Now, you have to know two things. You have to know, one, what each nerve does, and you have to know it in, in what I would call medical speak. You have to understand, you, you have to know, for example, that the spinal accessory nerve um, innervates the sternocleidomastoid. You have to understand which muscle innervates the stylopharyngeus, um, the, the swallowing muscles. You have to understand all these, these very specific things. But you also have to understand what is a person going to complain about. A lay person's going to talk to you, and you have to be able to receive that information in a way that you can put it into the context of the cranial nerves. Um, but you also have to talk to your colleagues about, um, you have to be able to talk in the language of your colleagues as well. So um, this shows you uh, another uh, way to, to think about this in within, this is a more anatomical, this is a more diagrammatical uh, illustration of the same thing. So within the brainstem, there are these different areas uh, that are color-coded for different functions. They send or receive axons through this common pathway called the facial nerve. And once they uh, get out of the, the dura, they start to split off to go to the various places that they need to go to to, to serve their functions. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the list of the cranial nerves, and we're gonna go over it this way, that way, and the other way. And I suggest that you repeat this process at home, and you sit down and you learn the stuff cold. Uh, this is uh, high yield stuff. If you're uh, stuck on a desert island, you need to, to diagnose somebody um, this is a critical piece of the neuro exam. This can get you to where you need to go. Okay, so we need to know all the cranial nerves. We need to know all their components.